So, um, on the 31st of last month, 31st October 2015, there was uh, a Russian airliner crash. It was 33 minutes uh, or something, half an hour nearly, after taking off. Uh, the aircraft crashed, leaving Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. And it's probably only just kind of been at altitude for a short period of time with that, I would have thought. Uh, it crashed in Mount Sinai, a uh, mountainous region, fairly uninhabited. A uh, type of airplane, I uh, just researched this a little bit. The type of airplane is an A321 airliner, uh, Airbus airliner. Um, there's plenty of these planes about, and you may or may not know this, but the Airbus family consists of uh, about five planes, I think. There's five different models, and they start quite small and then go up to, not jumbo jet size, but uh, still with just two engines, they go up to uh, quite a big size. And the bigger ones, uh, the 321s, it's an A321 is the type of plane. That's the biggest. It's significantly bigger than its nearest uh, companion in the model series. They have an excellent uh, safety record. I could only find four, four uh, accidents listed. Uh, and that includes the um, October 31st crash, which was Saturday. Uh, I remember that because it's Halloween. Um, now basically at this point in time a couple of days afterward they've got the black boxes they are keep on dismissing pardon me various theories that are brought up about how this plane crashed but essentially it's a catastrophic failure so either uh, you know it's 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 broken up in mid-air because of some incredible fatigue problem and that would be the first of its kind on a 321. So let's just say straight away that, that catastrophic failure due to uh, metal fatigue or something like that is, is almost, it's on the fringes of credibility. Um, the crashes that I read up on, the four, the four crashes, remember, so we've got that one on the 31st, that's the one that we're talking about. Previous crashes included... Uh, one was the, the aircraft hit a truck that was on the runway. I mean, you know, it was going to take off or it was landing, hit a truck on the runway. The guy driving the truck had just driven out without looking, you know, as you do on a runway. Um, and the aircraft crashed into it. Everybody go, okay, no problem. All right, so that's one. Uh, another one, it crashed into a mountain in terrible visibility. And it was an experienced pilot. It's put down to pilot error experienced pilot and he ignored 21 warnings in the cockpit uh, you know telling him that the terrain was coming up to meet the aircraft so I mean I don't know I haven't looked into it too much but that's awfully like the guy was either suicidal or he had um, uh, had a heart attack or something something that left him in a situation where he, he was not really cognizant of the world around him and wasn't behaving normally as he would have done with his 35 years experience so you know, they said pilot error, but it could have been a heart attack, I don't know. Some kind of major trauma with a guy, either physical or psychological. So those two are nothing to do really with the aeroplane. Uh, there's another one which was to do with the aeroplane, which was uh, a couple of sensors jammed in position supposedly. And they made the aircraft think it was stalling. Um, because it thought it was stalling, it tried to put its nose down, I think. Because if an aircraft stalls, it, it's like that. You can go any angle you like an aeroplane if you've got enough power. But you'll get to certain... If you're at any given speed, there's a certain angle of attack at which the aircraft will no longer maintain flight. If it's going just too slowly to fly... Uh, I mean, ancient aeroplanes like Gypsy Moth biplanes, they could fly at 50 miles an hour or something, maybe slower. But the, uh, the big jet aircraft... They need to go in the hundreds, I think, to, to basically be able to fly at all. Uh, so this this particular aircraft, 
thought it was stalling, so I think it therefore put its nose down, and so there was an issue. However, the pilots managed to land it, and again, there was uh, no loss of life. I think that's how that one went. So basically, um, very good safety record. Uh, so this is a very unusual situation. Um, they are gently nudging themselves by dismissing various things and saying it's catastrophic. It's awfully nudging close to somebody having got an explosive device aboard the aircraft. And they reckon a bag of sugar-sized device could do it. Um, I don't know how homemade it could be. I don't know if that's got to be sophisticated, high power explosive like C4. But it's it's edging. Everything else is an outside chance. It's edging towards an explosion. It was full of Russians. The Russians have just started to attack Syrian uh, positions of ISIL. I would be very much prone to saying that it's a reaction to exactly that and that the security in Egypt is not as good as it could be. And my holiday in Sharm El Sheikh is definitely hanging in the balance now. I think I'll be waiting on that one now. Uh, so, awfully like an explosion. Thanks for watching and listening.